being stalked for 16 years is enough. This is probably going to be a long story, so bear with me, as the story has a lot of details. The reason why I wanted to share my experience is because I know a lot of other people out there, at one time or another in their lives, dealt with someone who's been super creepy or had that person begin to stalk them. So, here it goes. Here's a short history of how this all began. When I was about 16, my mother told me that a friend of hers needed a babysitter. And I was more than willing to take the job because I could always use the extra cash. I had a very close relationship with my mother, so I completely trusted her and this friend of hers, since my mother doesn't just trust anybody. So, I began to babysit for her 10 and 7 year old daughters. The oldest one had a major attitude, but after I became a regular sitter, she wasn't as difficult to deal with. If you're curious as to why I'm sharing this information, there's a vital detail to the story. Let's fast forward several years. I'm about 19 years of age now. I know this because I had just graduated high school the year before, and this was a major deal in my life so it's all very vivid in my mind. I hadn't babysat for this family for about two years by this time. I was pretty busy with going to college, working my part-time job, and spending spare time with my family and close friends. So, one day, my mother approaches me and asks if I'd be willing to befriend a girl that her parents felt needed socialization. She gave me a few details before I decided on what to do. She told me that the girl that she wanted me to befriend was one of the girls that I used to sit for. I asked her who she was referring to because I sat for several families when I was a full-time sitter. She told me who it was. I was slightly hesitant because of the attitude she had when I first met her, but I was always open to helping other people in any way that I could. So I began to get together with her every once in a while. I would invite her over to small gatherings with some of my other friends, but only if there are younger ones with us, like their little sisters or something. I was always in a group of people of various ages, usually around the age of 13 plus, and I've always had both guys and girls with me. My older friends and I are sort of like the big sisters of the group, so that's why we're always happy to have these types of get-togethers. She slowly opened up to me, she began to share with me that she was dealing with a lot of depression and often felt like she was unloved by her family and friends. She also told me that she had contemplated suicide and was cutting herself. Well, the reason I took more to her than the other younger ones is because I had dealt with those same exact thoughts and feelings when I was around her age. So I wanted to do my best to give her a listening ear and a shoulder to lean on. I would give her some advice, anything that I thought would benefit her. Once she felt like she could trust me, I tried to broaden her horizons, but things slowly would take a strange and eventually sinister turn. Now, when I tried to invite her out to our usual get together or social events, she seemed very standoffish. I was a little surprised, but not too much because I knew how difficult things were for her and it did take her some time to start warming up to people. Eventually, she began to try to drag me along with her when she had one of her I don't want to be here attitudes. For example, we would go to a house of another friend of mine. There would be maybe six or eight of us total, and we would watch movies or do something else. This was before the days of social media and the everyone has a cell phone era. She seemed to want to go, but as soon as we got wherever it was that we were, she wanted to leave. She would pull me aside and say, I don't want to be here, let's go. Well, at first I was kind and I would tell her, okay, come on, let's just stay for a little while and if you still don't want to be here, we'll leave. I soon learned that she didn't want to stay, even if we were all having a great time. Eventually, she kept pulling me aside whenever we were in a group setting so I just eventually stopped inviting her altogether, because all she wanted to do was leave, no matter what the circumstances were. I mention this because it's another vital part of the story. I would just spend time with her once in a while, just her and I. 
She then began to call me on a daily basis. It started with two or three times a day, and eventually it got up to seven to ten times every single day. As I said before, this time in my life, I was extremely busy, so I wasn't always home. I had my own telephone line because I was able to pay for it myself, and I had an answering machine, not a voicemail because I'm too cheap to pay for that feature that I didn't need. Anyways, I'd have to change tapes so often because she would just call me and leave me messages after messages. She would leave messages like, where are you? Why aren't you answering my phone calls? Who are you with? That was just a little bit too weird for me. Even when I told her that I wasn't always home until late in the evenings or at nighttime, and all she had to do was leave one message, and as soon as I got home, I returned all the messages I'd missed for the day. But no, that didn't deter her from continuing to do this day after day. I began to get really annoyed, but stupid me didn't listen to my gut instincts. I kept telling myself, she just needs a friend and it's not her fault. Boy, would I soon learn that that's just not the case. Eventually, I just kind of drifted away from her for a bit. Not intentionally, but it was just because life seemed to speed up and I was even busier than I was before. There'd be very few times that I could get together with a friend or two, possibly go out to eat, go shopping at the mall, or maybe seeing a movie. Out of nowhere, she began showing up wherever I was, and no, I didn't tell her where I was going, or who I was with. Like I said, I pretty much drifted away from spending time with her. We lived in a pretty big suburb, so it's not like it's easy for her to know where to find me. I began to get really creeped out, because I thought all this was just way too coincidental. That she was everywhere I was when I'd be doing anything recreational. She even found out where I worked and what college I was going to, something that I've never told her. She was obviously not college age, so why would she be at my college campus with her mother? She wasn't even in high school yet. Unfortunately, this isn't even the creepiest part. Yeah, there's more to the story. When I was on break from college, I had time to spend with family and close friends. I did get togethers with her a couple times. Still not listening to the creep meter I had going off. I was so stupid. Well, things took an even more weird and unexplainable turn. She would ask to spend the night, but I really didn't do sleepovers anymore since I was of age and pretty much leading my own life. But she was still a young one, so I'd invite her over once in a while to stay over. Somehow, and I have no memory of how this happened. But she wouldn't leave. It's like she slept over one night and just never left. Trust me, there was definitely not an open invitation for her to stay long term. I had told her that she couldn't stay with me because she had her own life. And so did I. And she got very angry with me and for several days refused to leave. Thankfully, I was still living at home at the time and my mother had to step in and pretty much bluntly tell her to get out. She had a little temper tantrum that night, but she did end up leaving. By this time, I had been fed up with her irrational and erratic behavior. I was avoiding her like the plague. I didn't call to her if she was somewhere that I was. I would just duck into hiding and I'd try to lose her in the crowd. That didn't stop her from increasing her strange behavior. Her family even did some things that I feel sort of helped her stalk me more. Now, this is not something that I'm making up. This actually happened to me. She moved into the street around the corner from where I live. Now, that's not even the scariest part. Her and her family moved into a house, which, from her living room window, you could see directly into our backyard. And from there, you could see the window to my bedroom. Yes, that happened. I only know this because I found out where she moved, and my mom was still friends with her mother. So I remember going over there once, when she wasn't home, and when I looked out their living room window, I could see our house, my bedroom window from our backyard. We had a chain link fence so you could literally see everything. I got the chills when I saw that. When we got home, 
I informed my mom, who was so busy socializing she didn't even notice. That's when my mother tried to talk to her mom and tell her about the situation. Her parents just both ignored my mom's warning. My mom tried to ask them to talk to her about backing off. Well, that didn't happen. Things just escalated from there. Her mom even tried to convince me to stay friends with her and wanted pretty much to just pawn her daughter off on me. I don't even remember what she said to try to convince me of this. I just remember saying to myself, Okay, lady. You're just as nuts as your daughter. It wasn't long before the most sinister and disturbing part happened. This was the last straw. I was home alone one day. She was still living in the stalker house, so that had to be how she knew I was the only one home. I wasn't talking to her. I'd even changed my phone number and told my friends to absolutely not give it to her, which they respected and happily obliged. Anyways, as I said, I was home alone. It was maybe about 10 a.m. I was just getting up to take a shower and get ready to start my day. And as soon as I got out of the shower, I heard the doorbell ring. I think nothing of this, and I just go answer the door. I've always looked through the peak hole before I answer the door, something I still do to this day. I see several police officers standing there. I got the sick feeling in the pit of my stomach thinking something had happened to one of my family members. I answered the door and they asked me, are you B? B is in reference to my stalker's name. I'm using that to protect my identity. I answered, no, she does not live here. The officer then asks me, do you have any identification with you? Which I answered, of course, but it's in the back of the house. I have to go get it. Now, mind you, I'm totally confused as to why they're at my door and why they're asking for my ID. The officer then proceeds to tell me that he has to come with me when I go back to the back of my house. I just nodded in agreement, but still confused as to what the heck is going on. So, we go to my bedroom and I grab my identification and I show the officer who I am. He just says, okay, thank you. May we sit down for a moment and talk to you? I, of course, agreed and motioned him back into the living room, where the other officers had joined us. We sit down, and they tell me they received an anonymous phone call that there was a young lady that lived at my address by the name of B that was extremely suicidal and may have already taken her life. I just sat there for a moment in complete shock. I told them that she used to be friends of mine, but I haven't talked to her in quite a while, but she absolutely didn't live there. They asked me if I had any contact information for where she was. Thankfully, I still had her info on hand. I then gave them her contact information, telephone number, home address. They then thanked me for my time and left. I thought that was the end of it. Not by a long shot. After they left, I called my mom immediately. She then proceeds to tell me to come over to her workplace until I had to go to class for the day. I hightailed it and drove over to her office since she owned the business. It wasn't a problem for me to stay over there for a few hours. I stayed there until I had to go to class, and then I just went on with the rest of my day, although I was still pretty shaken up a bit. The rest of the story is from a third-party perspective. All my close friends knew about the situation by this time. Her behavior was way too psychotic for me, and I was going to do whatever I needed to do so that I would stay safe. I believe a few friends of mine and myself were at a coffee shop, one of those internet cafes from back in the day, and we were just talking. That's when another mutual friend of ours walks in and comes right up to us, looks at me and says, I have to tell you something. I was like, okay, shoot. Apparently, a few days before, they'd run into B, and they said she looked eerily exactly like me. My jaw dropped, and I asked, what do you mean? We in no way look similar, no shape or form. I mean, it wasn't like you would confuse one of us for the other. Well, she'd apparently began to dress very much like me, 
dyed her hair and styled it just like mine. Wore the same kind of bracelets I would wear. I had a bit of a thing for friendship bracelets back in the day. And just looked exactly like me. I was shocked to my very core. Later, I'd been on the phone with a couple of my friends. I had a three-way calling feature where you would call two people at once and all talk to one another. One of my friends on the other line informed me about what they heard about why the suicide report incident occurred. Mind you, this was a few months after the fact. She had heard from a reliable and trustworthy friend of ours that the reason was, and this is going to blow your mind, is because B had called anonymously to the cops saying that a young lady by that name lived at my house and was suicidal. That's not even the craziest part. The reason she did that is because she wanted the police to think that I was her. She gave the police my physical description, and this was before she started looking like me. So they'd take me away to a psychiatric ward. Therefore, with me out of the way, she could take over my life. How super crazy could she be? I don't even know how she could even think that my friends and family would allow her to do that. But that's just how mentally unstable she is. Now, the timing for me was perfect. I was getting ready to move away from the area anyway because I was about to start a new job, and life had just taken me in that direction. My family was moving away with me, for obvious reasons, so we did in fact move away. It was the best thing to ever happen to me because she just got worse and worse over time. She began to harass my close friends, trying to find my whereabouts, like, where's my address? Where's my phone number? Why had I move away? Where did I move away to? They didn't give her any of my information since they knew how psychotic she was. At one point, she even began to stalk the brother of one of my very close friends, just so she could try to intimidate him to tell her where I was. He had to have his grandparents step in because he wasn't of age yet. I have no idea what happened to that situation, because I've already moved away by then, and the internet wasn't like it is today. Now, let's fast forward to 2012. Mind you, the stalking began around the year 2000. Obviously, since 2012, social media has been a big thing, and of course I had a Facebook account. I didn't even think of my privacy because, to me, all that was long behind me, and I eventually forgot about B. One day, I signed on and take a wild guess as to who tried to friend me on Facebook. My heart sank for a second. Then, the first thing I did was delete her request and block her fast. Thinking I'd taken care of the eerie online encounter, I was wrong yet again. She began to have her friends message me, asking me why I didn't accept her request, why I blocked her, blah 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 blah. I blocked each and every person that contacted me, until the messages just eventually stopped. The last run-in I had with her online is when she tried to contact me through every single social media account I had, including my Twitter and Instagram. I blocked her, of course, and then she proceeds to try and make a fake account using my photo and my name. I thought, okay, little miss crazy, I'll fix your fanny. As you must know, by now, I am more assertive and I don't take any kind of craziness from anybody. I had all the fake accounts closed by reporting them to the proper social media outlets, but not before getting as much information as I could, so I could report her to the proper authorities. Thankfully, I had documented everything that happened in the past and kept it all stored away. What can I say? I'm a pack rat. Once I got the reports out, the contacts stopped. I also changed my name that I use on every social media account. So instead of using my legal name, I used an alias instead. This is one thing she doesn't know about me. No one except for my immediate family knows this little fact. I also put everything on super private and have set some super high security measures. Now, one last fast forward to May 2016. I turn my phone on like I do every morning. And after my phone loads up, it says, no service. 
I'm like, what the heck? There has to be some kind of mistake. So I called my phone company, and I asked them why my phone had no service, since I just paid my bill. They looked into their system, and proceeded to tell me what their notes said. They said that they received a phone call a few hours earlier that morning. From a young lady. They assumed it was me, I guess. And she said that she had a new phone, and that she needed a number to be transferred to this new phone. When the phone company told her that the name didn't match on the account, Somehow, and I have no idea how, she got them to change the name on my account from my name to hers. I have no idea what she wanted to accomplish by doing this, and even worse, how in the hell did she get my number? I explained to this person that she's a longtime stalker of mine, that I had reports to the police, and that I had to be protected against her because she's capable of doing anything. So, they asked me to go into their corporate office so they can change everything back to its original state. As well as putting some security measures on the account so it would never happen again. Now, since then, so far, I haven't had any more incidents. I am absolutely on high alert. Because if she's willing to wait 16 years and still wants to find me, for whatever reason, there's no way in hell I'm going to let my guard down. The only reason I didn't file a restraining order on her is because, as far as I know, she does not know where I live, and I want to keep it that way. However, if she thinks for one second that I won't ever file one on her if she does find me, she's got another thing coming. So B, let's not ever meet again.